Well, well, one of the cool things about the timber frame uh, method is that sort of one day it's not there, and the next day it's there. They'll make a lot of noise, a lot of sawdust, and a lot of holes. My name is Paul Garrett, and I'm the resident blacksmith here at the folk school. So I was really excited about this whole timber framing project because we see all these people here that came from everywhere, and they came here to build us a timber frame for our school. We have this old building on campus now, and it's kind of falling down, and we've been so excited about having these guys here because they're going to put this beautiful timber frame shop up for us. And not only are they going to do that, but they're going to cut everything right here on the campus in the class. So it's, all this happening behind me and in front of me is really exciting. I'm really pleased to have it happen. As you can see, I've, I've got a forge lit here, and, and I decided to come up here and just interface with these guys and like mix the trades together. So a uh, little coal smoke, uh, this, this aroma mixed in with the aroma of the, of the wood chips and all the pine shavings, it just, it's great. Well, I'm Jan Davidson. I'm the director of the John C. Campbell Folk School. This project is going to get us a new blacksmith shop and that's real important because we have a program that people depend on in the field of blacksmithing. It's probably the largest program of teaching in the country. So people think of us as kind of like the University of Blacksmithing so we have to try to be good. And we've been teaching blacksmithing here since the late 1920s and a lot of what we do is generally start people off with good beginning classes in blacksmithing but we also teach all kinds of advanced classes in it. People do large-scale architectural work and cooking stuff and they make tools, they sometimes make sculptures, all kinds of things that you can do in a forge. Our first blacksmith was um, Oscar Cantrell and Oscar was with us by the late 1920s. Uh, his original blacksmith shop was a three-sided building that's open. One side is open to the world, and that was his very first blacksmith shop. So blacksmithing's been something that we have done here since the beginning of the folk school in the late 20s. Then Francis Whitaker came along back in the 1980s and started teaching here, and Francis Whitaker was a very famous blacksmith as well. This is one of the larger blacksmith operations in the United States of America. This is probably the largest place to come and learn blacksmithing. Well, I'm Clay Spencer. I started taking uh, blacksmithing classes here in 1987. I was one of Francis Whitaker's students and I uh, was fortunate enough to get asked to teach here the second year. I was on the board here for about 10 years and I think we got things started three, four years ago. Jan Davidson, director, came down here and we talked and we went around back there and mission to this shop building and then the timber framers have been talking to us about coming here to erect the timber frame building but Charles has been teaching timber frame classes here for several years. I teach timber framing here at the folk school. We have a class twice a year in traditional timber framing techniques and during the course of that I got very familiar with the, with the campus. They have a extensive blacksmith program and the building that they're in is a timber frame, so I took a lot of interest in it. Unfortunately, it, it was uh, 90 years old and suffered a great deal, and it's failing. So initially, I had talked to the, uh, Jan Davidson, the director of the folk school, about doing something about that, and, uh, perhaps tearing it down and building a new one. But the, it is a historical building. We want to preserve it as much as possible. So the idea behind it was to build a new facility there at the same location. Right now, we're using this time to kind of introduce everybody to what they're going to be working on for the next couple of weeks. And they're getting a chance to ask questions and try to wrap their head around their task. And then the noise will probably start tomorrow. Welcome to the project here. We'll be here for the next couple of weeks. And after that, we'll hopefully have a big barn standing up. The basic process, uh, in, in layman's terms, of building a timber frame like this is A, acquiring all of the uh, timber through some kind of a source, a sawyer, they would call them. Uh, we got this stuff through a, a sawyer in um, LJ, Georgia, and uh, this stuff came surfaced on all four sides, or they call it S4S, and it was all nice and neat, and the dimensions of it were pretty good. I mean, they were all square and, and true, and so uh, all the timber showed up here at the festival barn and we took the stuff and laid it out. The Timber Framers Guild divided the work crew up 
into crews. There was one crew that did just braces. There was crews that did uh, raptor uh, beams, purlins. There was crews that did just posts. And uh, what they did was they would take each piece, they would grade it, they would look at it, they would look at its flaws, they would try to figure out uh, how to cut around something. You, don't, you obviously wouldn't want to uh, you know, cut a brace or cut a, a mortise into a, an area that was weak. Uh, they would reject a piece if it was not good enough. Um, so we would very carefully lay all these, uh, all these beams out, all the joints that were cut uh, from very carefully drawn out plans. Once the crew leaders approved all the markings, then the workers would start to cut and, uh, and shave and chisel and mortise. And, uh, it was a really neat process. The, the shavings up there on the, on the floor were, were pretty deep at times. Cardi, M-C-C-A-R-T-Y, first name Joel. He once was a man from Calcutta who coated his tonsils with butter, reducing his snore from a thunderous roar to a mild oleaginous mutter. I bet you haven't used oleaginous in a sentence this week. And here it is Saturday. What do you want to know? I'm the boss. It's my privilege to work for the Timber Framers Guild. And one of the many things the Guild does throughout the years is develop and operate community service building projects that we use as a teaching platform. So you go around the shop here and you'll see students and teachers that are largely interchangeable. But you'll find apprentices, you'll find people with no skills in our trade and people with decades of skills in our trade. Presumably they're working happily together to produce this structure for the folk school. The underlying purpose of these events from the Guild's perspective is to educate tradesmen and women in the dark arts of timber framing. There's something about what we do when we structure these projects around nonprofits and fellow charities that is motivating enough for our members so that nearly everyone in this building is a volunteer. Somehow they've convinced their employer and their wife and their family and their parents that it would be okay if they came down here to North Carolina to this remote corner of the woods, which I heard described yesterday as so far back in the woods that even the Presbyterians were handling snakes. They're all 12 by 12 by 30, which is a pretty big piece of wood for us to try to deal with. It's uh, heavy, it takes two guys just to roll one over, so we're kind of taking our time and working through it. The uh, folks that are doing it are basically intermediate timber framers. They're wanting to learn this technique and have the ability to add that to their repertoire, so we're doing our best to, to teach them the foundations of it and to um, give them the practical application of actually laying it out and doing the cutting. My specialty is teaching the beginners, which helps bring them into the world of timber framing so they can be more advanced and, and learn skills. These guys have never cut big timbers before, and so I'm trying to explain the basics, the very basics, to allow them to cut some of these big timbers with some of these big saws. There's going to be a margin of error somewhere, and if you start out a sixteenth off and let that continue all the way down the frame, you know, according to the size of the frame, you can end up with an inch in the long run. So if we can catch it on these tables, we can not be hanging around like monkeys with power tools. Certainly work is not a four-letter word for this crowd, and we do take a great deal of pleasure in each other's company. We're living together, we're camping together, we, we're getting up early, leadership team meeting at 7, tool roll out at 7.30, team meeting at 7.45, off to breakfast and back here for work, and then we'll stay here until 8.30 or so. Night school tonight is the project uh, structural engineer, local guy named David Hordikin's coming over, and we're going to torment him with questions until he runs screaming from the room. Or maybe we'll just get smarter by what he tells us. As a member of the Timber Framers Guild, I thought it would be an opportunity to bring the Guild into the folk school environment. Very similar programs here. I believe the Guild's mission statement and the folk school's mission statement are very similar. They're both educational organizations. We saw a need that they had and that we could fulfill and still follow our mandates to educate people in the craft of timber framing. And the school's been very supportive of my attempts to create a timber framing program here. That was four years ago. It's been back and forth a great deal, and I've understood the concerns they've had, and they've been patient with me, and understood my uh, passion behind replacing the existing building, and showing some respect to the old timber framers by providing a new timber frame building on campus as our legacy to the campus. It'll be the anchor for the next hundred years for their program. I'm honored that they took my idea and 
There's been literally hundreds of people that's been active in helping us get the program going to handle the advertising, the financing, fundraising, developing the plans, the engineering, literally thousands of hours by volunteers to help us get the program going enough that we can come to where we are today. And 11 days from now, we're going to stand up a beautiful timber frame building. Timber framing as a building technology was the dominant form in North America until about the Chicago fire and it was so widely understood and so widely practiced that we think it wasn't actually called timber framing, it was known more familiarly as building. And with some technological innovations around that period of time, including the invention of the wire nail instead of the handmade nail and the powered automatic sawmill, the stuff that we love to do became inefficient and a poor competitor for a country that needed housing and structures right away in large quantities. So it sort of fell by the wayside in the 70s as an offshoot of the back to the land movement. A bunch of guys, especially in northern New England, tripped over the technology in existing buildings. They uh, became fascinated by it and began to band together in small groups, and some of which became companies and one of which became the guild. There is this very old model about trading labor for learning that uh, I think you'll hear more about as you go around and interview these guys and gals. So off we go. I came up here for a week to enjoy the camaraderie of the timber framers. I've been to another timber frame uh, operation. This is my second. This is, of course, much larger than anything I've ever even read about. So this is a fairly large project. If I had to say what the best thing about this is, I would say it's the people, it's the ones that are here. There's so much skill, there's so many things to learn, it's like an exciting adventure every day. I am lucky enough to be part of the compound joinery team, which is actually my weak spot in terms of timber frames. Uh, we are building the complex angle members in the roof. This is uh, beyond amazing. My name's Tim Conway. I'm up here from uh, Lake Worth, Florida. I'm participating with this uh, timber framing project. They've uh, started me out real well. I've gotten some great instruction. So uh, I'm here with my son, Michael. We're having an awesome experience, a great bunch of guys. My regular job couldn't be uh, more different than this. I, I do accounting work for a power company. I'm Andy Scogan. I'm from Minnesota. I work as an engineer. I just joined the guild about four or five months ago and it's been doing everything that I can get my hands on. I like timber framing because the people are probably the best I've met and the work is pretty awesome. I'm Richard Wright from Monroe, Georgia. I enjoy a lot of things about timber framing. The craft, the thought of the lasting and permanence of a building, and the idea of working with all these great people. My name is Will Folks. I'm from Albany, Oregon. 25th of April is when I started at the Hartwood School and that's basically my introduction. I've done a little bit before, but nothing really to speak of. So. Yeah, it's such a privilege to be here. I'm Brian Phillips, and I'm from uh, Woodruff, South Carolina. I'm here at the uh, Blacksmith Shop Project to do a little timber framing and uh, share a little bit of what I know about fall protection and rigging. Timber frame is kind of a, a hobby of mine. I don't do it for a living, but uh, about the last year and a half, I've been uh, cutting a timber frame that's going to be an addition for my house. Well, my name's Ed Nix. I'm from Beckett, Massachusetts. I really like, you know, building any skills, and I feel like this week especially, I've built my power saw skills a lot, working on these big beam saws, trying to be efficient with my cutting, just seeing how it all fits together, trying to visualize what's going on. Well, I'm John Kaufman. I come out to these things about once or twice a year just so I can cut on timber, use chisels and sharp instruments and stuff like that. Learn something about building trades and learn something about how to do this sort of work. I've been doing it probably 15 years as an amateur. You know, I never made my living at this. I earned my living as a computer programmer. I came out here and I, I took a blacksmithing course the first week, so I'll finish out this, this week with Tim Francis get on home. This is incredibly exciting, I think, for everybody involved, especially for the instructors that have been coming here year after year and working in the old blacksmith shop. To work with the Timber Frame Guild and have this incredible structure going up is amazing. And just being up here for the week, working with these guys who are so devoted, not only to the folk school, but to the 
craft of blacksmithing and to spend the week with them doing something so massive like this timber frame workshop is really, really exciting. Well, I'm really excited about it. I think it's really going to be at least a state landmark. There's nothing like it in the surrounding area. It's going to be one of the most exciting shops to work in in the country. In that sense, it's a real point of pride. My name is Abel Allen and I'm a blacksmith and I came here to help out with Work Week. I also grew up here and this is where I learned. Initially we have to lay out the timbers on the horses to identify which piece is going to be used for which piece in the building. Then we are ready to transfer from the plans to the timber by transferring the markings and the measurements. Once the, once the timbers are marked off and checked so that everything is in its locations, then we'll start the cutting process where we'll actually bring out the tools and, and uh, drill the holes and cut the mortises and the tenons uh, and get the piece roughed out. Then once it's roughed out, we'll continue to make pieces until we have the collection uh, to form the cross sections of the building. We'll clear a large far, part of the floor, we'll lay them on the floor and we'll actually put it all together to check the joinery, make sure it was cut properly and of course it will be. And then uh, we do have to do some tweaking and trimming. Once we've confirmed that everything is where it's at, then we can break it apart and identify it and then stack it and have it ready to take down for the final assembly. My name's Gable Holder, I'm from Monroe, Georgia, and um, I was put in charge of the, the site layout and the raising for this project. So I put a lot of thought into how we were going to actually build the building on the, on the slab. We're down here today snapping lines on the concrete slab, trying to position the building exactly where it's going to land. We've got a lot of things to work around, a couple of silos and a lot of conduit for the electrical service. And we're uh, manipulating things to try to find the best fit. So far the concrete works look, looking really good, uh, no problems. We've got a little bit of a conflict with this silo, but we're going to chamfer the back of the post to fit that and, and everything should work out just fine. We knew it was going to be a little out of the ordinary, a little challenging, but that's, that's part of the interest of this project. What I'm looking at here is a big post. This is only, you can only see a couple inches of this post, but it's 12 by 12. And it goes up here to the ceiling, it goes all the way down to that post, it goes all the way up over here to that and down. And this, this bent weighed several tons. And uh, it, was, it was assembled at um, the site up there, the cutting site, and made sure everything was fine. The uh, peg holes were all cut in here and uh, everything was set to go and they were transported down here to the building site and they were put together again, pegged in place and stacked up in the order that the, that the timber frame was going to be assembled. So then what they did, they got the crane in here and they raised the first bent and then they raised the second bent and then while well, they were raising this bent, these girts were uh, it held up in place by other workers this level and the level that we're standing on, we're on the second floor now, and it was all assembled and pegged together and braced. And then it would go to the third bent and then the fourth bent. And then they started putting on these purlins and assembling the top. Uh, the room behind me is another room, it's a classroom, and there's a whole other, what's called a clear story up there. And it is uh, full of just beautiful, beautifully cut timber, and it's very lofty, and, and uh, it's kind of a really nice airy space. Um, so that's the process, kind of the, kind of the basic process of, of doing the timber frame is, is selecting good lumber, marking it well, cutting it well, making sure it fits, assembling it, and standing it up. This is really great. I was telling a few people I have not heard one complaint, either about rain, heat, wind, bad food. Everybody's just really happy. I'm really proud to be a part of it. My name is David Ortican. I'm a professional engineer and specialize in heavy timber engineering. And I was retained to do the engineering review of the frame. And uh, I'm out here today just observing the uh, setup of the frame. And uh, they're doing a great job. You know, it's not very often you get to work on a project with this many people and uh, no egos and, you know, get to see it all come together. Uh, it's been great working at the folk school. This is my first project with the Timber Framers Guild, and uh, I'm blown away. My name is George Morrison, and I'm from uh, North Carolina, and I'm here building the timber frame, and I'm a professional timber framer, carpenter, builder, whatever you want to call it. Every experience with the with the guild and, and these projects is, is wonderful, and, it, and they're all unique. I've done a couple of them. I've been in this 
instructor on it. This is my second time being an instructor and, and just getting to know people and it's people that you communicate with for years to come. My name is Ford Hall and my official title here on this project is Rookie Instructor. And I'm from Grasstown, North Carolina and I timber frame full time in Grasstown. I've enjoyed working with a group of people and directing them into the work, which was great. Uh, and then working with different people as well in the industry has been wonderful. And getting to see their practices and their equipment, which has been great. To really celebrate the crafts coming together, I think, is just spectacular. And I think people just did a outstanding job of coming together and holding each other to a high standard and I mean the frame speaks for itself I'm really proud of it and I think a lot of people by the end of the two weeks had seen themselves do things that they never would have thought they could accomplish when they first got here. It's a wonderful chance to celebrate two separate crafts, the timber frame and blacksmiths coming together. The fellowship has been fantastic. The uh, product just speaks for itself and I hope all of you can come and enjoy this beautiful school and come see our work. We joke about making the world safe for timber framing. What we're really doing is, is demonstrating every day that uh, work is not a four-letter word, that doing work well in and of itself is a worthy goal. If you look at this frame, it's certainly fair to say that any professional timber framer I've ever worked for or with would be proud to have this level of work attached to their portfolio. And we've been able to do that with a combination of a terrific attitude on the part of our volunteers and a first-class leadership team. But here we are, right where we want to be. It's been a year now, and these joints are still tight. There's little, you know, very little uh, movement in the frame. There's very little checking. There's, the joints are still tight. There's, there's no gaps hardly anywhere. And they just did a fantastic job. We're really happy with it. Um, it's hard to believe that it's been a year ago already that this was done. But uh, now uh, we're in it. It's all finished up. We're going to teach our first class next week. Well, I'm uh, very highly honored uh, to have this shop, this forge, named for me. I didn't intend that or think about it uh, over the years when we were trying to improve the existing shop and asking for trying to get the board or trying to get a better shop, a bigger shop, or more equipment or uh, get things to be safer. I never had any idea about that. And I really enjoyed working here at the folk school for the blacksmithing program and working on the shop trying to get it better and uh, make things better for the students and for the school. Here we are again at uh, Blacksmith's Work Week. This is actually Blacksmith's Work Week 2. We already had a work week this year. It was in April, which is our, kind of our normal time. We had about 25 blacksmiths here to help prepare this new building for classes. And there was just so much to do and so much construction left to do that we couldn't actually move in when we were, uh, had planned. But uh, what we're doing this week in July now is we're going to actually physically move some of the tools or all the tools and some of the equipment over to the new shop. So uh, it's been 31 years since we uh, occupied the current shop, the Francis Whitaker shop, which we used to be a milking barn. And uh, now, 31 years later, we're actually going to move into a bigger space, which is this beautiful timber frame structure that was constructed uh, almost, well, a little over a year ago, June of 2009. So what we're doing this week, we're moving from one building to the other. We have a smaller group of people. We have probably seven or eight people this week. Uh, some of the regulars that have come here again to, to donate a week of their time to help us move. So we've got a lot of stuff going, we've got a lot of uh, anvils, post vices, swage blocks, cone mandrels, hand tools, all this stuff, even some of the coal we're moving over. So uh, uh, it's, it's a great event, it's been a long time coming, we've been working on this project now for about five years. This is a wonderful week for blacksmithing at the folk school, we're making the final move of equipment into the new shop here. And it's going to be a wonderful space for blacksmithing. We still have the same number of forges, but with more space, there will still be the Francis Whitaker Blacksmith Shop, and this will just be the Clay Spencer Forge of the Francis Whitaker Blacksmith Shop. I'm uh, very highly honored uh, to have this shop, this forge, named for me. 